Hmm. I'm student of Dr. Mujahid Bakar. Oh, Ustaz. Uh, yeah. Tuan Guru Mujahid. <laughs> yes, yes, Tuan Guru. Yes, yeah. Chef, Chef. Chef Mujahid. Uh, I'm doing on uh, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary, study, interdisciplinary study on um, ethical issues in human genetics from Islamic perspective. Oh, that is very... Uh, Intrigue. <laughs> so, a lot of things, a lot of uh, interesting things there. Yeah, this is very good. Yeah, so you are going to be an expert on the aspect of uh, uh, okay. what, what you call it, uh, unethical dispute <laughs> between science and religion. Eh? Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> that's what. That's why it's called uh, interdisciplinary science. <laughs> hmm. And you are from Kelantan as well? Yes, I'm from Pulai Chondong, Prof. Eh? Are you okay? Okay, okay, Pulai Chondong. Oh, yeah. uh, let, let's keep that thing uh, later. <laughs> Because sure. I was born and raised in Pulai Chondong. Okay? So, I'm a Pulai Chondong man also, you know. What about uh, Happy Zudin? Happy Zudin? Uh, uh, my name is Hafiz I can call me Hafiz. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate uh, under uh, supervised by Dr. Nick Fakaruddin, forensic, forensic program. Dr. Fakaruddin? Oh, ah, okay. Dr. Nick Fakaruddin. Yes, Nick Fakaruddin. Uh, fingerprinting uh, expert. Uh, currently, I'm doing on uh, analysis of trace order, persistent and transfer. Oh, okay. And your background is? Uh, forensic chemistry. Forensic chemistry from which university? Uh, I'm from uh, USM since I'm degree. Okay. So you are uh, undergraduate, your, your bachelor degree is ah, yeah. from PPSK? Yeah? Ah, yeah. Master, uh, I'm doing, uh, doing master uh, at USM. Uh, which school? Uh, PPSK. PPSK as well. So now you are doing yeah. masters, eh? You are doing uh, masters. Currently, I'm doing a PhD. Oh, PhD already. So you ah, finish yeah. your masters, yeah. Ah, yeah. That's good. Good. Ah, Fatin, Fatin, is that you, Fatin? Is that the 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 true Fatin, the one I used to know? Yes, Prof. Fatin here. Ah, so everything okay? Ah, uh, Alhamdulillah, okay. Uh, please approve my because I just uh, saw your Facebook. I so I add into my Facebook list, you know. So uh, hoping that you approve. Sure, sure, sure. I uh, jarang buka Facebook, prof. Sorry. I know you. You are not a Facebooker. I know. I know. It's, it's okay. <laughs> that is totally fine with me. It's not a problem. The okay. problem is if you are spending too much time on Facebook. <laughs> okay, prof. Uh, So who else? Um, hang on. I'm looking at the participants. You, you have 11 participants. That is okay already. Fakru hmm. uh, Razi, and then who is this journal club? Hamiza, Hamiza, yeah. Hamiza, yes, Hamiza. Uh, Hamiza, can you introduce yourself? Hamiza is here. Yes. Uh, Hamiza. Hamizah ada. Husna, Husna. I can see the name came came out. Alila, Alila Haris. 
Are you there? Uh, yeah. I think they are having uh, lunch food. It's okay, it's okay. That's my job. Yes, I'm here, Prof. Yeah, so is, who is that? That's Maiza. Okay, that's Maiza. So can you introduce yourself? What 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 degree are you doing? Uh, okay, assalamualaikum. My name is Rasmaiza Akmarosdi. I'm currently in Nutri Lab, but I'm doing some documentation here. Um, I'm a PhD student. I'm in Tedaski. Okay, Dr. Dasuki. Okay. Mm -hmm. so you are joining. Uh, uh, you are under biomedical, huh? Uh, yes. But previously, I was um, doing my master degree in human genetics. So, oh, this quite, um, uh, for me, is something that um, relates it to me for my PhD and also for my uh, genetic study previously. Okay, okay good. So this is quite interesting. This is yes. interesting. Mm. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Shafrina, Shafrina, Rizwan. Rizwan, or oh, Shafrina. I think they are not ready yet. Zahida also. Nurul Shazwani. Nurul Shazwani. Yeah, we, uh, Assalamualaikum, Prof. Yeah, salam, yes. I am Shafrin Shafat Ali. I'm doing PhD under Dr. Wan Ami. Oh, you are anak Datuk, Datuk Shafat Ali, eh? Eh, tak, tak. Bukan Datuk Omar, bukan? Oh, bukan, bukan. Okay, saya ingatkan anak guru saya tadi. Oh, bukan Prof. Uh, because uh, Datuk Omar Syokat Ali was the former Senate member of PSM when I was doing my undergraduate. And when I become a Senate member of PSM, he is still a Senate member of PSM. <laughs> <laughs> so you just imagine how long he served the units as a senator uh, in a, in a USM Senate. Yeah? So his name is Datuk Dr. Omar Shakatali. Shakatali. His brother is Professor. Um, I remember. Also Shakatali. I think maybe your ancestor are the same. Yeah, you are not, you are not, um, you are not, uh, Jawi Pranakan, eh? You are Malay? I am Pakistani, Pakistani. Ah, Pakistani, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sama lah, I mean, sama, uh, macam Syakat Ali, Datuk Omar Syakat Ali. Because Syakat Ali is a family name, kan? No, Syakat Ali is my father's name. What's your father's name? Yeah, my father's name. Okay, yeah. Uh, can we start? Eh? Because uh, it's a, it's a, we have a, a, a huge amount of things to, to share. And it's a very interesting uh, area, a topic that has been given to me uh, today, uh, which is uh, looking at the uh, uh, application of this uh, advancement of biotechnology in, in medical science. And uh, the issues and also uh, the concerns uh, that came out, out of it. Okay, so uh, uh, my background, my, my background is uh, biotechnology. I am not a biomedical scientist. During my time, uh, graduate 1991 USM, we don't have a biomedical program yet. So uh, I, I graduated my degree uh, in uh, applied science, uh, biotechnology. Uh, but if you realize uh, that uh, our hood, you know, when graduation time, our hood are the same. Uh, because uh, biotechnology is applied science, and biomedical science is also applied science. 
<coughs> so we are wearing uh, green and yellow stripes uh, hood uh, during the conversation. Uh, okay. Um, I will share this. Uh... Okay, you can see the slides, huh? Okay, I can see. Can see the slide. Good, good. So, um, first of all, I just want to introduce to you what is biotechnology. Um, uh, people uh, like uh, those who have a background in biology, uh, you have no problem understanding what is biotechnology. Uh, but people like uh, Pakru, 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 Pakru Razi uh, just now uh, may have, uh, you know, uh, you need to do some uh, uh, extra reading uh, to learn about biotechnology. It's a very big area. Um, uh, basically, it's a, it's a technology which is based on biology, uh, where we exploit uh, the biological processes uh, for a human need, industrial need and also things that can help us in our life. So we produce tools and application and so many things with uh, biotechnology. It helps our, our life and our, uh, our work. Okay, so that is biotechnology. So uh, this is the tree of biotechnology. Uh, you can see here um, the basics of biotechnology, the pillars of biotechnology, you have uh, uh, molecular and cell biology, you have immunology, you have microbiology, you have biochemistry, you have genetic, and then you have human animal, plant physiology, and you have also chemical engineering. Uh, so this is basically the pillars of biotechnology. Uh, that's why um, uh, if you are if you if you become a biotechnologist, you need to be good in in all this uh, area, especially uh, the main one, which is biochemistry, genetics, and also uh, microbiology. Okay, uh, chemical engineering and also um, uh, immunology. This is new area that came in uh, after uh, 1990s. Okay, uh, because after that um, the uh, the the introduction of uh, genetic engineering and also um, antibody engineering so involve a lot of immunology and uh, chemical stuff. Okay, so before that, uh, the main area uh, that support biotechnology was uh, genetics, biochemistry, and microbiology. So if you if you cannot find a microbiologist, you can find a biotechnologist to do work for you. If you cannot find a biochemist, you can go and get a biotechnologist because they were trained just like at par with biochemistry. And if you if you want to have uh, a help from a geneticist, uh, if you couldn't find a geneticist, you can go and get the help from a biotechnologist because they sit the, the classes together with these three groups of people. Okay, so uh, this is the, the pillars of biotechnology. And you have there in the middle of the tree, you have genetic engineering and the application of biotechnology. You can see here uh, in energy and environment management, you have in agriculture, animal science, in plant agriculture, crop improvement, uh, you have fermentation technology, you have diagnostics. You have diagnostics, uh, which is also a very important area uh, in, 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 in medical science. You have healthcare and pharmaceuticals, and also uh, food innovation and food processing. Okay, so this is the uh, the application area of biotechnology where you you use uh, biological processes uh, to help you with uh, in the area. Uh, I I can give you an example of uh, of how uh, people are using. Um, new forms or new strains of bacteria to produce drugs, to produce uh, special needs protein uh, using um, DNA manipul manipulation technology uh, and also fermentation. Okay, they, they produce a special food uh, and they produce diagnostic. What we are going to see uh, today is uh, two areas only, only two areas there. 
vaccine, uh, the diagnostic, and also uh, the healthcare. The healthcare. You, you just you just imagine uh, how big this biotechnology business area. Uh, we are going to discuss only these two here: uh, the the medical, the healthcare, uh, pharmaceuticals, and also uh, diagnostic. Okay. Um, so let's look into the healthcare, the medical biotechnology. So this um, area is actually a branch of medical science that use living cell and cell material to do research and then produce products, pharmaceutical products, and also uh, material for the diagnostic purpose. Okay? And in medical biotechnology, issues is a lot. It started starting from funding until you produce the product, you will have a lot of issues. So um, uh, some of you may uh, involved in uh, in vivo experiment, uh, animal tests, and so on and so forth. So you know that you have to go through uh, ethical clearance. You have to go through so many uh, committee, uh, biosafety committee, and so on and so forth uh, to, to to get it. You know to make the things moving, uh, to get the clearance from the government, from the university. Uh, to make sure that uh, the work that you are doing is actually um, according to the uh, proper uh, standard uh, SOP you know, by, by, by the government. Okay, so, so there are issues, of course. Without the issues, they won't have this regulation. Okay, so um, I am going to introduce to you uh, another area which is actually uh, uh, um, supporting. Uh, medical bio biotechnology, which is nano biotechnology. Okay, um, why I I I uh, bring this area uh, today is that uh, because we want to discuss about advancement. Okay, advancement of medical biotechnology. So anything that giving enhancement, giving a new uh, way of doing things in in in, in medical. Uh, by technology will be will be discussed uh, today. Okay, so uh, nanotechnology is the research at the level of hundred nanomore nanometer. Okay, hundred nanometer. And uh, you know what is nano? Nano is ten to the power minus nine. Eh? Sepuluh kuasa tak uh, sepuluh So that is nano. Uh, you can see here uh, the size of the molecule. Um, so this is uh, the size of the molecule. Uh, 10 to the power of minus 1. 10 to the power of 0. Okay, 10 to the power of 1. All in nanometers. Okay? And it's getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so so um, um, the size of uh, SARS. COVID-19, COVID the size of COVID-19 uh, virus particle is uh, in the range of uh, 60 nanometer up to 120 nanometer. The size of uh, influenza, okay, the size of influenza is in the range of 120 nanometer up to 180 nanometer, which is influenza virus is bigger compared to the COVID-19 virus. So when we are talking about nanometer, so that is the size that uh, you, you are looking at. You are looking at the size of a virus particle. So it's very small, very small. And why I want to discuss today about uh, nanotechnology is because we have a lot of nanomaterial that we are using every day. In our experiment, it's just that you couldn't um, um, realize that the kit that you are using is actually um, having this uh, material, the nanomaterial. Uh, for example, if you are using transfection experiment, you transfect DNA or plasma uh, into a cell line, you are using um, a special transfection material, which is 
actually based on on the liposome mediated gene transfer method okay they have lipid based nanoparticle which is capable of encapsulating um whatever dna that you are having and then transfect it into the uh, cell line okay if you use uh, liposome right, to, to, to transfer uh, 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 genetic material uh, the very direct example is the uh, pfizer uh, vaccine that we are using now, the, the Pfizer vaccine, Pfizer BioNTech vaccine is actually uh, mRNA, uh, which is encapsulated in a special uh, lipid-based nanoparticle, which is some sort of liposome, and then uh, it uh, it uh, we, we further uh, transferred into the into the human body and using injection. Okay, you have nanogel, nanogel. Uh, which is uh, normally uh, people use uh, for cosmetic and so on and so forth. Uh, you have quantum dots. Uh, quantum dot is a nanoparticle which contain a special color. Uh, people use quantum dots to uh, to do labeling on biomolecules. Uh, for example, if you are um, doing um, imaging, for example, you are labeling your your serum or your protein so you use quantum dots okay and then you have ketosan 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 is actually a ketin based nanoparticle which is uh, uh, normally um, usually being used in pharmaceuticals to transfer drugs from outside into the uh, mammalian uh, system and then you have den den dendrimer dendrimers you have uh, metallic nanoparticle uh, something like uh, you have ion nanoparticle, uh, you have magnesium, uh, what else? Uh, ion, and then you have carbon nanoparticle, uh, and then you have uh, uh, polymeric nanoparticle. So this kind of nanoparticle is is being used widely uh, in, in 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 the world of uh, medical uh, technologies. Okay, this is the reason why I uh, brought to you um, nanomedicine nanotechnology why because you can see the market of the business which is uh, uh, mainly you know in, in medical biotechnology the no global nano nanomedicine market is billion you see usd billion in 2014 go up to more than 100 billion and you can see the pattern of this uh, in, in, increment is actually um, berkada terus, you know, it's uh, showing uh, a parallel uh, with the uh, anti-cancer product market, which means that most of the anti-cancer are using nanoparticle uh, to encapsulate. Why? We will discuss about this later. Okay. So this is. Uh, just to show you uh, another uh, uh, the funding that uh, has been prepared by the government uh, to support the research in, in uh, nanotechnology. You can see from 2001 eh, until 2015, it goes up to uh, millions, eh, more than 100 million USD okay, by, by the government. This is global nanotechnology funding. So everybody, everybody, every country in the world are spending a lot of money uh, in uh, nanotechnology. And then what are the most business in nanotechnology, in the nano uh, uh, biotechnology and also nano uh, medicine? You can see here, most of the nano, nanotechnology is being used as a drug delivery system. You can see seventy six percent, seventy six percent of the technology has, has is actually being used for drug transfer, and that's why uh, when when uh, when uh, the pharmaceutical company uh, like Pfizer or uh, you know uh, AstraZeneca they, they they want to put in. Uh, the vaccine they, they, they use nanoparticle 
because they know that the best okay, the best uh, particle to transfer the drugs or to transfer the vaccine is basically is a nanoparticle okay and then you can see here um, the second one the second usage of uh, nanotechnology is in vitro diagnostic okay so every uh, diagnostic um, modern diagnostic technology at the moment these days they are using a very uh, precise and sharp um, a nanoparticle uh, system okay and then you have here uh, biomaterials and then you have some more uh, imaging you know to fight cancer they use a special uh, solution that that, that can be uh, detected in, 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 in human body and then uh, implants and also drugs and therapies so this is basically um, the portion of percentage of uh, where nanotechnology is actually um, needed uh, in, 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 in medicine okay so uh, this is just an experiment uh, result uh, that people have reported that uh, what is when people talk about uh, nanoparticle what is the size how big of the size that is allowed you know like to be engulfed into the cell so uh, science, uh, we have already uh, confirmed that if you want to transfer nanoparticle into the cell, you have to design <laughs> your nanoparticle at the size of 40 to 60 nanometer. You can see here the engulfment uh, will go into, um, the, into the cell for the size, uh, the optimized size is around 50 nanometer. You can see here also the experiment that people do. Okay, you can see here yes, the 50 nanometer is uh, is the most size that cells like to go and eat. <laughs> Simple word. Okay, so if you are doing experiment or science uh, or research of transferring your your genes or whatever uh, that you have into the cell. You have to design your nanoparticle to the size of between 40 to 60. Okay, if it go more than that, the capability of taking in engulfment by the cell is going to be reduced. Okay, it's just to show you. Um, okay, this is uh, the efficiency uh, between a uh, naked, uh, naked uh, biomolecule that you, you inject into the cell compared to the one that you have in nanoparticle you see if you if you inject if astrazeneca or the phone, if uh, pfizer inject the vaccine rna without nanoparticle uh, without nanoparticle encapsulation then the mrna will you know will never reach the cell it will die here because you have so many barrier you have excretion barrier you have serum degradation barrier, you have non specific distribution, which, because you wouldn't know when you once you inject, you know, uh, intramuscular and uh, the vaccine, it can go anywhere. And it, some of them is not targeting the cell. But if you have nanoparticle, you know, put the mRNA inside it, then you can actually target it. Your, your, your area of place that you want, you want to send your your uh, your, your biomolecule, whether it is a mRNA, whether it is a, a peptide or um, uh, interference RNA, so whatever things that you want to put inside your cell, you can encapsulate in an, in the nanoparticle. Okay. So uh, now the issues. <laughs> Let's talk, go into the issues because our topic is to discuss about the issues so once you introduce nanoparticle there are seven challenges first you need to determine the distribution of nanoparticle you know once you inject your nanoparticle in the body you you don't know where it goes so you need to you need to you need to carry out an experiment uh, from in vitro and in vitro in vivo 
and straight into the uh, human system to check where is this nanoparticle is going to be distributed in the body after it is injected. Okay, that is the first one. The second one, you need to develop the method of imaging. There is no point of you, you know, to 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 to, to create a nanoparticle to be used in human body, but you forgot to think about how to visualize. Because once you inject the thing inside the human system, inside the you know the circulation, you wouldn't know where that thing going. So you need to think about how to develop the imaging method to visualize where is these things actually moving? Where does it stop? Where does it go and accumulate? Okay, that is the second one. The third one. After you manage to find, you know, you manage to visualize, you manage to know um, <clears throat> where are those uh, nanoparticles that you injected into the human body, you need to know how, you need to understand how <laughs> this, nego this, this nanoparticle negotiates with the cell. Whether it goes and kill the cell, or they can they go and engulf into the cell, if it is been engulfed into the cell, where, 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 where does it go? Does it go straight into the nucleus? Does it go, you know, straight into the cytoplasm and then degraded inside there? So you need to know. So you need to know how nanoparticle that you design negotiate, communicate with the cell. <coughs> Number four, after you know how cells interact with the nanoparticle, you need to predict what are the risks. What are the risks that may occur by putting the nanoparticle into the cell? Okay. Once you manage to predict the risk, then you need to predict the benefit and also what does it do bad to the cell. So you you cannot only predict, predict the risk, but also you need to predict the benefit and the bad things of the nanoparticle. And then after you manage to uh, um, establish the risk and also the benefit of a nanoparticle, you need to establish a SOP, a standard protocol, you know, a consensus protocol that can, you know, can provide a um, uh what you call it uh, repeatable uh, a benchmark lah, something to do with if you um if you give to another lab then another lab follow your procedure and can get the same result that you are getting okay and then the last one uh you need to <coughs> you need to have an analytical tool uh so that uh, you can you can you know explain in a very layman uh, way uh, to the people of using uh, the one that is going to use your uh, your product okay so so this is the issues of uh, nanomedicine um, that we have uh, if you are you know uh, doing uh, nanotechnology or nanobiotechnology uh, in in the in the medical science okay uh, why why i i i i uh, expose to you about this because on the way from the way you saw, you know, from number one, number two, number three, number four, it is a multidisciplinary. You know, a material engineer cannot do what is, what is, you know, what is being um, uh, supposed to be done to to, to study the the cell negotiating, negotiating, communicating with the nanoparticle. They they wouldn't know because material engineer they can just only design. So you need a biologist. You need a cell biologist. You need a, a person who sit down and uh, um, do cells experiments with the nanopart nanoparticle. Okay. And then, uh, uh, not only that, uh, you need to, to know about uh, uh, the benefit of the uh, nanoparticle. Then you have to need, you know, to need the help of uh, a biophysicist. 
the person who actually um, <coughs> looking into the uh, um, the chemical part uh, of the nanoparticle, the design, okay, maybe uh, the method uh, of how to uh, synthesizing the nanoparticle is not correct. You need to use different uh, material. You cannot use uh, 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 nano nano gold, for example. You should use uh, nano silver or nano carbon, so on and so forth. So those kind of stuff. Okay, so this is actually a uh, multidisciplinary area. Okay. Now, the second medical technology. Okay, we finish with the uh, nanobiotechnology. We looking into the another area, uh, which is called somatic cell microtransfer. Uh, any of you? Uh, I think, uh, I think most of you have heard about somatic cell microtransfer, uh, but not giving so much concern about that because uh, this technology is far beyond uh, our reach. Uh, in 1996, when the technology was firstly developed by um, uh, Keith Campbell and uh, Professor Ian Wilmot, I think you still remember the, the story of Dolly the Clone. Any of you uh, still remember Dolly the Clone? Ingat lagi tak? Okay, so this uh, Dolly the Clone is actually um, a technique where uh, scientists they are trying uh, to produce another organism uh, with somatic cell okay so that is extraordinary so if you produce another organism using manual method biasa, so you use embryo you know you do in vitro fertilization you take sperm and then you take oocyte and then you fertilize and then after that you can get uh, embryo and from the embryo you can you can propagate the embryo you can slice the embryo you can produce a twin triplet uh, quadruplet so that is normal because you are working with with uh, embryo okay already being fertilized but what is what is uh, has been you know, established by Keith Campbell and Ian Wilmot in 1996, when they produced um, the so-called Dolly the clone, the sheep, because they are not using embryo, they are not using uh, sperm and oocyte, they are using somatic cell. You know somatic cell? Inside our body, you have two kinds of cells sex cell and other than sex cell is called somatic cell so so you just name it your skin cell your memory cell any cell inside your body is actually somatic cell so if you can take somatic cell and produce another you then you are basically playing god so this is the issue this is the issue Okay, so in 1996, when uh, <coughs> Dr. Ian Wilmot uh, from Roslyn Institute, Edinburgh, uh, is is uh, is is a uh, uh, animal biotechnology research wing for Edinburgh University, they have a research center like Inform lah. <laughs> in USM, we have Inform, right? Uh, so in Edinburgh University, they have Roslyn Institute, it is the center for research uh, uh, in biotechnology, veterinary animal biotechnology. So um, this guy was uh, <coughs> she and he, he took a, a somatic cell from uh, from from uh, from a sheep, the uh, and then uh, <coughs> it, he took also a egg cell from another bibiri, uh, another uh, sheep, and then removed the nucleus, you know, and now the the egg cell is empty. And then after that, he took the somatic cell a nucleus and then by using um, some sort of electroporation, you know, 
produce like electric wave, artificial activation, uh, he produced the embryo. So Dr. Ian Wilmot carried out 267 trials to get one success to produce the embryo. So once the embryo is established, he you know he grow the embryo and then after that after the embryo is uh, enough to be uh, transferred uh, he transfer into a uh, foster mother another sheep and then after that uh, dolly was born so if you still remember uh, dolly was a uh, famous uh, topic in, in 1996 it came out in nature I think uh, it's a volume 180, 180, I still remember. I was working with the veterinary services. Actually, I was actually doing the same thing. We are racing. <laughs> so um, this is what he, he did. He took the, the donor egg, okay, and removed the nucleus. And then he took another uh, a sheep and just take mammary gland. He took mammary gland, it's a somatic cell. And then after that, he, you know, just uh, uh, give some electric wave, and then after that, when the embryo is formed, and then grow it for a few days, and then after that, transplant, transfer into um, into the, the female, uh, what we call foster mother, ibu uh, using the multiple uh, 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 um, multiple ovulation embryo transfer. It's, it's a technology by itself, uh, by putting. Uh, uh, inside there, then after that, uh, uh, Dolly was born. So this is Dolly. You can see uh, uh, Dr. Ian Wilmer is here. Nobody take this picture, so all the camera is uh, looking at Dolly. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, in 2014, uh, a group of scientists they reported that they can do the same thing with the technology they can do the same thing uh, to help uh, human disease fighting cure of uh, uh, a chronic disease okay so the idea was that uh, they take the same ideas take oocyte okay take oocyte remove the, uh, the the nucleus denucleation and then by using the somatic cell nuclear transfer technology, take the fibroblast from you know from you and then inject it into the into the uh, into this uh, uh oocyte and after that grow the, the cell until it produce develop up to blastocyst and then this uh, blastocyst is further induced until it, it produce like uh, what we call it, uh, embryonic stem cell, okay? Either a pluripotent uh, embryonic stem cell or uh, the germ cell, okay? And then after that, it induce, it induce the stem cell to become neurons, to become retinal, to, to become cardiomyocytes, to become cartilage. So that all these cells can be transferred into the into into you, if you have that problem. So this is uh, the method that has been developed, uh, reported by Chung, uh, in 2014. Um, uh, the, 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 the application of uh, somatic cell nuclear transfer uh, to replace cell from uh, from the same person. There are issues, okay? Because without telling you, you already know that the issues is epic. If you can grow you, another you, that is wrong. Even the religious, uh, our our Islamic religion, uh, don't allow for you to to to, uh, to go on with doing that. That's why uh, once uh, in 1996, uh, when uh, Ian Wilmot. Uh, produced Dolly the clone. He was the first person that has been uh, approached by, uh, by by the church, you know, to to, to explain uh, what is actually happening. And then uh, uh, 
uh, to counter it. And I think he was one of the very uh, prominent um, person uh, to support uh, the religious group uh, to you know to 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 to, uh, to make sure that, that the technology is not being uh, uh, implemented in <coughs> in humans. And then uh, from yeah um, legislation to uh, the producing actor actor lah, you know, to stop. Uh, somebody said it for transfer in uh, human embryo. That was in 1996. In 1996. But now after you know after 20 years, under 30 years, they have reviewed, and then they I think they have allowed certain uh, research in human embryo to support the uh, medical advancement. Uh, something like uh, something like this one lah, you know, to to, to help. Um, uh, what what we call it uh, therapeutic cloning. Uh, you know the, the, the human somatic cell nuclear transfer. You have two kinds uh, of uh, cloning. Um, the first cloning that uh, being showed to you, you know, producing the dolly the clone too. That is reproductive cloning. Okay, that is reproductive cloning. But if you are using cloning method, somatic cell nuclear transfer method to produce therapeutic material, you know, all these cartilages, this cardiomycete to, you know, to, to help you with, uh, because uh, the heart is not working anymore, you can go die, is it? So, this, this, if this is the only technology that you can help you, so, so let be it, so something like that. So, that's why they allow, they allow the technology to develop uh, in, in Europe. Okay? Uh, but, with a very strict uh, regulation. <clears throat> so now, why, why this uh, somatic uh, cell nuclear transfer is very inefficient? You see, this is the normal way of uh, reproduction. Okay, from the <clears throat> from the pre pre model uh, from the germ cell line, you know, from the germ cell line. It will produce sperm and it will produce two sides. So you have uh, eggs and sperm. And then after that, there will be fertilization. And then after that, it will be embryo development. And this embryo development, you have blastula, uh, blastula, until it, you know, full uh, embryo is formed. So that is not a very simple process. It has uh, billions of uh, <coughs> gene expression, gene regulation, uh, and so on and so forth, and produce what we call a, a baby, you know, a baby, a human with adult tissue, with adult stem cell, and this is actually uh, produce another human. Okay, so this is normal way of reproduction. Let's see. Uh, the somatic cell nuclear transfer. Straight away from the somatic cell, whether it's a skin or mammary gland or whatever somatic cell, lah, again, the one that you are having, you just take it like that and then uh, you transfer, you know, you transfer the nucleus into the empty oocyte, empty egg. No gametogenesis, no nothing, no fertilization. So what happened to the, the whole process? The gene regulation, the up and down, everything. There is no activation of embryonic genes. So that's why, <coughs> that's why Ian will take 267 times to produce one success, to produce Dolly the clue. So they have already um, uh, calculated that uh, if you do uh, somatic cell nuclear transfer, seventy percent of the product is going to be abnormal. Fail twenty-five to thirty percent fail, and you have one to five percent normal. And you you need to remember. Dolly Deacon was born in 1996. 
and Dolly was was uh, the the she she passed away very early, and she was diagnosed with old ages near disease. So Dolly is never a young um, lamb, you know. When he when she was born, she is already the same age, like. You know the big one, the big dolly. Uh, so uh, dolly uh, gave birth one, uh, and then after that uh, she, she she just died. Okay. So this is the thing. This is the the, the area, the gray area that scientists uh, need to <coughs> to tell people. Now the new technology. Um, I think all of you uh, know about this technology, the CRISPR. CRISPR is a, is a kind of editing, gene editing technology. Uh, if you still remember when you uh, when you learn about uh, basic genetic, uh, we learn about uh, a central dogma. You know central dogma? Uh, from DNA and then you have transcription, can You have transcription, you produce mRNA and then this mRNA will, you know, um, swim out uh, from the nucleus into the cytoplasm searching for ribosome and uh, when they meet the ribosome they will start the process that we call translation and then after that we have polypeptide coming out so that is central dogma i think all of us uh, <coughs> uh, memorize uh, those uh, gene regulation process okay um <clears throat> but uh, in early uh, 70s and in early 80s, people are talking about gene silencing. They just uh, uh, silence the gene by using interference RNA. So you can basically stop the production of protein by um, silencing. Okay? If you can produce antisense RNA, which is actually complement to the genes that you are targeting and transfer it into the human system, it will go and bind complementary. And it will stop from the, you know, uh, 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 it will stop the, the binding of the mRNA to, to, the, to the ribosome. And it will stop the process of translation. So that is the old stories of what we call um, uh, the standard interference already, okay, silencing technology. But CRISPR, CRISPR is actually a new um, method, which is not controlled by you, but a, but by a system which is already being designed by God in bacteria. <laughs> okay, so uh, CRISPR stands for clustered regularly into space short palindromic repeat that has been discovered by a group of scientists in Osaka University way back in 1987. Um, I couldn't remember Ishino, wasn't it? Dr. Ishino, you, Yoshi, you, Yoshizumi Ishino. I still remember because the opinion name too, just like Dr. Izumi. <laughs> Yoshino Izumi. Yush, Yoshizumi Ishino, uh, the name. So this, uh, Dr. Ishino, um, uh, he was studying uh, the genes that uh, corresponds to alkaline phosphatase in bacteria. And he, he did a clone, uh, a cloning experiment, and accidentally uh, he uh, detected, you know, he, he cloned um, unintentionally a, a group of clustered interspace short palindromic repeats. But that time, nobody knows. Even himself, he don't know. He just report it. You know, when you do research, you can submit report, kan? You can submit. Uh, you know, you go FRGS, you have to submit one paper. So he published ah, the paper reported. <laughs> so things like that. Okay. And uh, but um, in 2012, uh, a scientist, a group of scientists, uh, uh, the uh, Max Planck Institute. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Machentier and uh, Jennifer Doudna, uh, Jennifer Doudna, they discovered that this is actually 
a, a, a method of how to do proper gene editing. So um, uh, both of them, both of them, uh, Jennifer Doudna and also uh, uh, Madame Machentier was awarded Nobel Prize in 2020 last year with their works, the establishment of CRISPR as a genome editing um, technology. Okay. Um, let's look a bit about uh, this CRISPR technology. Okay. CRISPR technology is actually got two components. One is the RNA guidance. It's a short synthetic oligonucleotide which composed of scaffold sequence which is necessary for Cas bunny. Cas bunny is actually a uh, uh, CRISPR associated endonuclease. It's a protein that binds and do the cutting. Okay. Guide RNA detect the place where the things want to go and bind. And cast protein will go and cut. So this is brilliant idea. That's why I'm I'm telling uh uh, people, if if you you know you you this is another to me is another is another caramelist. If you still remember when Dr. Caramelist uh, invented the PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, you know that the caramelist was actually a scientist working uh, with Citus Corporation that time uh, uh, as a technician something you know he was doing. Um, uh, what we call it, uh, Sanger sequencing, the little manual Sanger sequencing. And then he, he, you know, Sanger sequencing, you, which is actually the dideoxy termination chain, can you put DD and DP, and then after that, the thing stop. And then you read it, and then, you know, you polymerize again, you put DD and DP, and it stop again. And after that, you read. And they use trainer fragment enzyme. So when he came out from the lab that night, he was thinking, what if I did not put the DD and DP, but instead, you know, just let the things go on. Let the things polymerizing. Huh? Let, it, let, let the polymerization, you know, occur all the way along. And then he did. And he proved to the people that uh, it works and produced PCR propagating DNA scratch from a small you know to the to the to the one that you you are using now in the lab Karimolis won a Nobel Prize he, he was never uh, known as a good scientist before that he, he, he just only known in the world of science after he you know he uh, he, he discovered the idea of polymerase chain reaction. So the same like this CRISPR. In this CRISPR technology, the two scientists they are looking at the uh, 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 immune system, the adaptive immune system developed by bacteria uh, to avoid, you know, infection of uh, bacterial flush or something. You know, they are looking into that, and they study. And somehow they managed to discover that, uh, that the two components is actually doing uh, a very um, nice targeting of gene uh, silencing, well, gene editing. So this is brilliant. Okay. So I, I'm bringing you here how uh, CRISPR developed, uh, been developed from the firstly uh, report uh, material by. Uh, by Ishino in 1987, uh, you can see that after um, uh, Jennifer Doudna and uh, Madame Machentier, uh, everybody as they are start using, start using the, the, the technology, and it start to uh, you know to be used as a, a prominent editing um, technology uh, for for uh, for gene silencing and so on and so forth. And then, uh, as we all know, that uh, in 2020, both of them was awarded uh, Nobel Prize. Okay, now, 
uh, CRISPR has been used in many areas. Okay, you, you have human disease therapy, uh, people use um, uh, to, 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 to study genes uh, regulation in cells and animal models. You know, by editing genes, you can study so many things. Uh, and then you, you can do so many things. Yeah? You have in agriculture also, they produce uh, so many strains of new plant uh, using CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology. Okay, now, the issues. Why this technology is seen as um, a threat for human beings? If it is not being used in a proper way or proper regulation. This is actually Dr. He Jiankui, um, a Chinese scientist who produced genetically altered babies and he was found guilty and was sentenced to three years in jail. This is actually uh, his last appearance, eh? his last appearance uh, in Hong Kong uh, meeting in November 2018, where he presented his work. After the symposium, too, nobody see him. Dia tak ada. Okay. You know China, how, how they do things. Yeah. If you do bad things, tomorrow you will be disappeared. So, uh, his intention is good. He modified a key genes. What genes you have to read this journal? Then the key genes, you know, when uh, HIV, um, a person who have positive HIV, uh, most of the children that came out from her is going to, you know, inherit the same virus. So you will also uh, an HIV positive. He knows. He knows. Uh, how to, you know, to change this thing. And then uh, uh, he did the uh, CRISPR technology, CRISPR Cas9, and then uh, hoping that uh, <coughs> when the father, uh, you know, get a child, and uh, the child will be uh, free from HIV positive. Okay. So, uh, so the technique can be used to reduce HIV AIDS disease burden in Africa and so on and so forth. That, that was his, uh, his, uh, <coughs> his reason uh, for, for doing that. But still, um, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, illegal. And then he was put in here for three years. So for those who are doing CRISPR, uh, please consult uh, proper people, uh, especially the biosafety, <coughs> biosafety um, uh, committee uh, of the university, okay? Because uh, this is very, very um, powerful technology. But now, the second one, that is the story of uh, He Jian Kui. What are the our concern is that in the future we might have people who want to reinvent eugenics. Eugenics, eugenics, when your idea was actually came from uh, Nazi, the German Nazi. They believe that. They are a group of people of, you know, top in the world. And they want to wipe out all the, all the Jews, all the everything. So they, that's why they kill all the Jews and all the uh, minorities. Minorities means everybody. Lah. Uh, if, 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 uh, uh, if you are uh, in the minority group, they will wipe you out. They will kill you. So that is eugenic. So... We are worried that in future, even now, there will be a group of people who wants to, you know, to edit the genome at the germline. 
you know, <clears throat> when you study cells, cells biology, before uh, all cells came out, the first cell is always germ line, you know, the germ cell. And this germ cell will differentiate, become sperm, and another one will become oocyte, the egg. Then it will start, you know, producing uh, reproductive uh, cells. So germ net, germ line cell is 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 the uh, undifferentiated, and you can do anything. I will give you an example. I am working with a, a transcription factor which is called Boris. It's a CTTF like protein which <coughs> can do so many things. It can express the gene, it can induce cancer, it can stop cancer, it can embind and regulate so many processes. And this CTCF like protein only occurs in cancer cell. In normal cell, if you want to go and look this protein, you can only go and see at the gym cell. Germ cell. So I have to grow germ cell line first to study my protein. So that's why that's why when when people know how to edit the genome of the germ line, you are basically you can produce a line or system which is at the top. Look at this here. How the technique works. You have a bad thing here, you know. Ala, we are not born perfect, you know. Huh? Some of us, when we were born, you cannot speak. You have uh, disability, study disability. Uh, you have uh, bad habit, and all those things is encoded in the gene. So we are basically we can edit that bad behavior. Earlier on, you go to the gym line and edit over there. And then once the thing differentiate to become sperm and oocyte, everything is clean. Healthy DNA strand. And this thing, eh, this thing can create eugenics. This is my concern about uh, this. Uh, CRISPR technology. The ones you can do on germline, you can do on stem cell. The induced pluripotent, the pluripotent. You know, pluripotent is 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 master cell. You 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 can you can produce so many cells out of it. So it's it's a it's a new area and. Um, uh, people uh, are on ethical, uh, they, they have to look into this uh, very, um, I mean, it is timely uh, for, for all people have to sit down on this. Otherwise, eugenics will start again in a very nice way, undetectable. <laughs> huh? You don't need to go and shoot people because you already shoot. You shoot already, you clean already at the gym line. There you go. The last one, okay. The last one. Boleh pergi ya, semua dah dah tidur. All of you. Okay, okay bro, ada. Ada ya, tak tidur. <laughs> belum, okay, belum. Bro. Dapat tengah sakit kepala ni banyak sangat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's look into the uh, biotechnology in diagnosis of infectious disease. Okay, um, this is infectious disease pato pathogens, you know, you know, HIV, uh, you know, coronavirus, you have uh, SARS-CoV-1, you have uh, MERS-CoV, and then you have uh, SARS-CoV-2, which is COVID-19, and who, no, nobody knows who's, who's uh, what, how many more coming up, 
you have polio, you have influenza, influenza, you have influenza A, influenza B, influenza Z, uh, and then each influenza has H1N1, H5N1, H7N9, and so on. So many. And all these strains of pathogen, they keep on, they keep on mutating. Okay? So we have to be clever at that. If they mutate, we have to be able to detect them once they mutated. Okay? So uh, this is actually virus and this is bacteria. Uh, and then you have tuberculosis, which is in the middle of uh, bacteria and also um, fungi. Okay, the principle of diagnosis, when you do detection, uh, for those who are coming from the biomedical background, you do uh, diagnostic attachment. You go into uh, micro lab, parasite lab, you know, hematology lab to do diagnosis. So the method of detection is always you cultivate the pathogen. You know, you grow the pathogen. After that, you identify whether using biochemical method or antigenic method or using genetic method, which is what we know as PCR. Okay. So modern technology, they always um, uh, based on a PCR. Uh, if you still remember, uh, the golden uh, method for uh, detection of uh, COVID-19 is real-time PCR. Okay. Okay. So now uh, PCR is basically a method of how you amplify a small part of DNA into billions of copies of DNA. That's how you detect positive or negative. Okay. But real-time PCR, you are producing uh, a, a different way of looking uh, into the amplification. You are actually um, uh, quantifying the amplification based on the uh, RNA of the target genes. And you need a special machine. And this machine is very expensive. And you can only find this machine in big hospital like HUSM, Hospital Kota Baru, or MKAV, or you know, big hospital. You cannot find this machine in Hospital Go Musang, ataupun Hospital Machang, you know, or, or Hospital uh, uh, Uruchka, <laughs> because this is very expensive, and you need somebody like somebody like uh, Najia, my partner Najia, to sit down. And do the things for you. Okay, so it is very expensive, and need train MLT a scientist. So now we are looking into the area. We go back. We go back to the old method PCR, but we do some enhancement. What we are going to do, we are going to produce what we call PCR F L F um, lateral flow platform. Okay, LFP. Okay, nucleic acid lateral flow platform immunoassay. Okay, this is the PCR machine. So this PCR machine, you can go and do your PCR in anywhere. You know, PCR machine is just like the size of the size of uh, a mobile phone. Ah, no, power bank and mobile phone. So you can buy. It's only like 3,000 to 5,000 only. So it's very cheap. So now in Uru Chika, you can do PCR already. Okay? And what we are going to do is that we are not going to run gel anymore. This is my old method. You see? To see this, to see this, you need to run gel. But now we are not going to run gel. What we do was, we just incorporate nanoparticle. And this nanoparticle is called nano gold. And this nano gold has color. Okay. Once it's amplified, it will produce band onto the strip. This is the cassette that contains the strip. Something like, you know, Pregnancy test. Yang you buat pregnancy test tu. Oh, siapa yang nak kahwin? You just put a drop of your, you know, 
uh, urine and then you can see the things coming out. Okay, something like this. So this is very easy. A new advancement of how biotechnology help medical uh, people to um, to detect uh, diseases. So uh, this is actually my uh, prototype research project funded by uh, Mohi. Uh, just started. Last year was awarded. Uh, we have already um, uh, signed an agreement uh, with uh, a few agencies who will support our research. Uh, one is uh, with the uh, veterinary services or the VRI because they are going to um, supply us uh, with all the influenza virus. And remember, COVID also not hitting humans. Okay, we always think about COVID because of human. Actually, COVID also infected animals. Okay, remember the first house, you know, the first post <laughs> of COVID was actually animal. So we have, uh, that's why the veterinary services need to look into uh, COVID-19 as well. So this is how we are going to uh, um, uh, do the uh, detection. Okay. PCR, you need a machine. But this method is another method that we call LAM. LAM. Anybody here doing LAM? Look, mediated amplification. Ada tak? Look, mediated isothermal amplification, LAM. And this technology is even better. You can do it even in your house. You just take the DNA and put the DNA polymerase and put in the incubator at 60 to 65 and then it will produce color. If it's positive, it will produce yellow color. If it's negative, it's going to be another color. So it's very easy. So I'm just sharing this uh, technology um, that we have um, uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, share, you know, we, we can we can expand our, our mind this evening before we go to sleep tonight. You can see maybe some of you uh, might win a Nobel Prize one day uh, after you <laughs> you 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 know you join this uh, discussion. Okay, so this is the method for the lamp. No need PCR machine. No need uh, uh, thermocycle. You just need an incubator. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, you can get the result. Some people they use uh, nanoparticle incubation. Some people they use direct color like this. So uh, it depends on how um, how you uh, utilize your uh, imaging uh, technique. Okay, I think that's about all. One hour, okay lah. I mean, one hour and another fifteen minutes. Uh, thank you for your uh, cooperation. Uh, I'm so sorry for a bit late. Uh, preparing this uh, because I have so many things uh, in the in the mind. Uh, and I, I'm I'm ready to take any questions if you want to ask. Thank you, Professor. So here are a few uh, questions from our audience. So first of all, uh, uh, from No Chaira. So we need SCNT before we get uh, IPS cells. Say again. Say again. Uh, so uh, from uh, from uh, no Chahira, but uh, yeah. previously uh, we need a SCNT before get uh, the IPS cells. SCNT, I, I couldn't get it. What what is that? About somatic cell. Uh, somatic cell. Uh, okay, okay, uh -huh. okay, yeah. okay, okay. Somatic. Uh, okay. What what is it all about? Okay. I, I I didn't get the question. I I didn't understand the question. Can can you write somewhere or send me? I think there is a chat there. Uh, I will uh, hang on. I will stop sharing. Okay. Uh, get see the chat. Okay.
Okay, we live in a market world. Okay, ada satu saja. Okay, uh, mana tadi? Uh, no Shahira. No Shahira, hang on. Uh -huh. uh, atas lagi lah. Okay. Still sell. Prof, so we need SNT before get IPS, yeah? Uh, no. No. Uh, in this pluripotent... Okay. Okay, yeah? Uh, there is nothing... IPSL is IPSL. IPS stand for induced pluripotent stem cell. Uh, SCNT is somatic cell necrotransfer. It's a technique. Okay, so um, uh, maybe Shahira was asking, do we need to do uh, somatic cell necrotransfer uh, to produce IPSL? Not necessarily. Okay, you you can you can you can produce uh, uh, a pluripotent stem cell. Uh, by a stem cell uh, method. There is another way of doing it. Okay. So, pastor, you have here. We live in a free market world in which it's really difficult to regulate this multi-billion dollar potential volatile based business. Who could actually regulate the technology to avoid any misuse for benefit of small group of people? What can we do as a tiny player in this area? Uh, nothing you can you can do actually. Uh, it's just that uh, you need to make sure you need to make sure that uh, <coughs> the progress of what they are claiming is actually uh, according to the international regulation released by the highest authority body. You know when when Pfizer, BioNTech, and AstraZeneca Oxford and also um, Sinovac China, when they announced, uh, no, Sinovac, no, Sinovac, uh, conventional method, uh, <coughs> yang buat um, mRNA-based vaccines, yeah? when they announced that uh, the methods they are doing, you know, the, of their production line, I mean, uh, of the vaccine was actually based on mRNA, which is not proven yet, by other diseases before, the technology was never been tested. So everybody was looking to WHO. You know, we are looking at the highest authority. And uh, without uh, WHO approval, uh, nobody will dare to start the uh, vaccination process. So that, that's why uh, it's the same thing here. They can come up with so many, you know, so many things, so many way of um, hiding the, 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 the real things behind. But as long as it is uh, according to the uh, proper uh, SOP uh, by the highest authority, health authority, which is the WHO, uh, then it would be all right. Nothing you can do. But you need to follow their technology. You need to understand what they are doing. And you need to, you know, um, uh, have your own stand. Because you cannot produce a fatwa without knowing what is actually happening. Even Saibu uh, Samaha, uh, Mufti sekalipun, uh, they will call the expert. They akan panggil uh, all the uh, experts in vaccinology, in uh, virus that um, virologies to sit down and discuss uh, about the the, the 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 thing so so as long as we understand what is actually happening that is fine and this thing is actually uh, um, undergoing if you still I think you have heard you, you have heard a few uh, reports saying that uh, people, uh, in Australia, in New Zealand, and also in Europe, uh, they are, you know, they have uh, some issues with uh, a batches of uh, vaccines, and they are looking into this, and uh, 
thanks God lah. I mean, Alhamdulillah, it is not. Um, uh, I mean, uh, to the extent of uh, uh, severe punya cases. You know, you 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 do vaccination. I used to have uh, a few friends when I was small. You know, after vaccination, when we standard one, two, we just go uh, paralyzed until now. Because uh, you know, you have like one one hundred thousand vaccination, and every kid, every child in Malaysia, if you didn't go and uh, do vaccination, tanam caca tu. This is the story of 1970s, right? During my time when I was born. <laughs> if you didn't do the vaccination. You will not. You cannot get the birth certificate, too. So they make compulsory. And uh, you know, when you do vaccination, everything is random. Everything is random. If you are not uh, lucky, you can get the one that contain one or two virus, and that virus active. So you get it, lah. So, so this is the thing that you 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 need to 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 understand. Why people do vaccination to to reach what we call herd immunity? You know, to get herd immunity, you need to have a certain percentage people in that country uh, to be vaccinated. Then you will get herd immunity. So we wipe out polio. There is no more polio. Uh, I think uh, in India, it started again somewhere uh, uh, a few years ago. <laughs> but very, lah, very uh, small, small cases. So we, we that, that is the purpose of the thing. Okay. So, no Shahira. Okay. So if I want to get induced pluripotent stem cell, I need blastocyst first, right? Uh, this one you need to discuss with your supervisor. Uh, you need to discuss with your supervisor um, <clears throat> because uh, stem cell uh, is basically you can you can you can have so many ways you can produce stem cell in many ways. Blastocyst is one of them. If you manage to to produce um, embryo. Once you produce embryo, the full embryo, you can take out the blastocyst. That blastocyst is actually um, uh, up in the stem cell. You can induce. You can induce. They call it IPSC. Okay. So you, you really need to discuss with your supervisor whether you can use blastocyst to, uh, to get the pluripotent stem cell. Because uh, for me, I am, I am not a cellular biologist, I'm a molecular biologist, but I use cell biology, I use cells to, to do my work. And uh, we, we, we used to take blastocysts uh, to be induced, to become what cells that we want. So that is the thing. Okay. Okay, any other question? Okay, uh, Prof. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I cannot hear you. How is it in? You are, you are muting yourself. You, you... Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, right now, uh, kita dah ada banyak uh, biotech, uh, advanced in uh, biotechnology, right? So, hmm. how about kalau macam uh, bioterrorism. So apa uh, prof uh, punya opini tentang bioterrorism menggunakan uh, this modern biotechnology? The uh, anthrax lah. They are using anthrax. They 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 send anthrax in a spores to everywhere that they want to kill. Anthrax, you know anthrax? Anthrax is a spores from a, a gram positive bacteria that can kill human. Uh, uh, they, they produce a toxin, this bacteria. Uh, it's very fatal. 
uh, very fast. And uh, but the problem is, uh, it's, it's not easy to grow uh, and track. Uh, you you need to you need to really look into it. Uh, before you start the experiment, they will catch you already. Uh, because uh, people know what you are doing uh, in, in the lab. So uh, bioterrorism is uh, people use anthrax, and some people uh, they are trying to use. Uh, well, they they say that uh, uh, COVID was actually one of the uh, virus which escaped uh, the bio weapon in China, mainland, whatever, which I do not believe. Because uh, after the investigation by the WHO, uh, they can FBI, uh, they, they went to China, to Wuhan, uh, in the early years, too, uh, to investigate, and they, they discovered that uh, it was not uh, in, uh, in intention. No. It was not a biological weapon. It, it's actually uh, merely a pandemic uh, due to uh, virus evolution. So no need to worry about uh, bioterrorism because uh, in Malaysia uh, we are well covered. I mean our police, uh, our anti-terrorist uh, uh, team by the by the military and also by the police is very uh, very up to date, and uh, they can catch the people before before they come out from their house. We are the best. Uh, we have the best police force in the region, you know. So everything you you catch after three days, bring that one closer. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Any question from the audience? Ustaz, kita ustaz. Hakurazi, Hakurazi, you can you can you can look into the gym, gym line, uh, gene editing. Sure. Uh, uh, as a one one part of the uh, ethical things that uh, is coming up. Uh, this thing is 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 in the kalau kita panggil tengah mengandung lah, lahir belum lagi. Uh, it, I think next year, middle next year, they are kind of boom. People will start talking about uh, germline editing. Because germline editing is very tricky. You cannot catch them because they are doing uh, something that uh, you you wouldn't know. They are growing inside the lab. If they ask you, you they say, if you go and ask them, they will say, oh, we are going, uh, we are growing uh, normal cell line. And... Uh, CRISPR Cas9 is, is, is uh, you know is is a is a kit. As long as you have the plasmid, you can do it. I can give you protocol. <laughs> actually, I I have a lot of questions, Prof. Actually, but I don't think we have uh, ample of time. Uh, ah, it's question. okay. You can come over and uh, we can discuss uh, over a cup of coffee. No problem. Like right now, we already have pre-implantation genetic testing or pre-implantation genetic diagnosis already in place in the market. Ah, yes. Offered by the private sectors. Uh, they don't have to go to through the, uh, you know, I mean, general hospital. They still have to go through uh, specialists in private hospitals. But like you said, the germline, Editing is a really scary, <laughs> scary issue. No? Yeah, because your lung is uh, something which is not uh, differentiated yet. But itu tak jadi telur tak jadi tak jadi sperm lagi. So kalau dia jantan betina pun dah dah kira tak boleh dah. You know, I was to work. Uh, I used to work with the veterinary services, and what we did was we just. We just uh, sex the sperm, yeah. 
if you want uh, anak lelaki, you use this sperm. If you want anak perempuan, you use this sperm. Pusat, you cannot change lah. Because pusat got uh, XX. <laughs> Yang decide adalah sperm. Because sperm got Y. <laughs> so we 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 just uh, sort the the sperm uh, the semen and then uh, um, bahagian hal ehwal agama jabatan perdana menteri seal off the lab. Wow. Yeah, it's not it's not correct. You cannot do that. You are playing God. That's what they told us lah that time. It was in nineteen seven in nineteen ninety six. Just uh just the a few weeks uh, before the the dolly was born. Hmm. Hmm. Kalau yang macam dia orang buat IVF tu prof, dia orang boleh pilih tu. IVF is already uh post decided. You know you know already you know you know already uh sperm and oocyte and then you just fertilize. So the embryo is already there. Kalau yang tu so, kalau dia orang boleh dia boleh choose tak which which cells yang orang nak ni implanted into dalam dalam rahim ibu tu. Ah uh, nobody do that. That is the work that I'm supposed to do. That has been blocked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But our 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 intention uh, was very 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 pure that time. You know, in the veterinary services when you do. Uh, multiple ovulated embryo transfer. Um, you are we we are in the breeding program. Macam tu, uh, kerajaan Malaysia we we develop a breeding policy. Dasar pembiakbakan negara. We produce no free wild. You know the big the big cow that you are eating now, the Malaysian Frisian Sahiwa was actually our work lah. Okay. Ah, okay. So originally. Uh, before 1980, Malaysia only has that lembu KK. You know the the the, the yellow yellow cow on the on the on the on the on the, on the street tu yang jalan. Tapi jalan. Ah yeah, tapi jalan tu. They only die because uh, being hit by a car. Only. <laughs> ah, they will never die. No disease can kill them. Oh. Yeah, very tough. But in terms of industry. You are not making money because they are small. Mm -hmm. So we bring in uh, new blood. We bring uh, Frisian from Australia and also from the uh, from Britain, and also. Uh, but the problem is Frisian is uh, uh, cold weather when you breed. After mm -hmm. two weeks, you put in our our farm, they will die. Too hot. Mm -hmm. So to balance this, we bring in. Uh, uh, another breed from India, kita panggil uh, Sahiwal. This Sahiwal is also very big, very big animal. They are the chilak mata. I think maybe you 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 know if you go to India or any place in Malaysia, you can see this animal. They are the satu bongo macam camel atau agak belakang. That is Sahiwal. So we take these three blood from KK. Sahiwa and Christian, and then we did in vitro fertilization. Oh. And then after the embryo is produced, we transfer into a foster mother uh, using uh, embryo transfer program. So when you do that, when the calf anak anak lembu lahir, uh, you tak tahu jantan betina. So at the end, bila yang jantan kita kena kumpul untuk hantar ke uh, pedaging yang betina kita nak hantar ke uh, pusat uh, apa tenusu. Jadi uh, kita terpaksa belanja banyak uh, duit lah untuk bawa anak jantan bawa ke bawa ke bawa ke pedaging uh, yang betina bawa ke pusat peternakan tenusu. So we just thinking if you can set the embryo and you can confirm what is going to be born is female, what is going to be born is male. You tak payah buang duit dah bawa anak lembu tu ke ke ladang lain. Itu je. <laughs>
ah saya bagi tahu you know uh, our team just mention that to the to the ni lah to the higher up lah uh, tak apa lah it's okay we can always go and send no problem just spend money je lah tak apa pun Uh, they have a very good reason for stopping uh, our 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 research because uh, they say that uh, your method, if humans can do, uh, it's going to be uh, very unethical. And we are all full agree, you know. Kita kita kata betul tuan. <laughs> kita setuju tuan cakap tu memang 100% betul. That's why we stop. Tapi kalau untuk high worker tak boleh bro macam tu. No no they, they, no once you touch uh, uh, mammalian uh, embryology uh, it cover everything. Uh, I don't know where were you in 1997. Where were you in 1997? Saya sekolah rendah. Ah uh, uh, okay because I came out in uh, uh, RTM satu. Uh, program Minda. I was representing uh, the veterinary veterinary uh, services, uh, National Biotech Center, and Professor Ko Chong Lek, uh, representing uh, UM that time. He was very young that time. A geneticist. Was, uh, yes, uh, Professor Ko Chong Lek. Okay, I know him. Uh, yes, uh, he's a very prominent uh, geneticist uh, in UM. Now he's uh, with the NUS, National University of Singapore. Um, and then uh, there is another panel, uh, Nchi Anwan Seng. Nchi Anwan Seng is actually a social punya, apa ni, activist. And satu lagi, Datuk, Datuk Harusani Zakaria. It was uh, Sabi Hutamaha, uh, Muslim Negeri Perak. So we were discussing about this issue. And these issues is already, you know, in 1994, 1995, 1996 lagi. Yes, almost. And it's very interesting area that uh, I mean, uh, we all need to relax because things are getting more and more advanced. So um, you just you just imagine eh, when I told you that my gene, you know, the gene that I'm working on, uh, which is CTCFL. It's only appear in germ cell. It means that there are a lot of genes, other genes, is appearing in the germ cell. And uh, if you can off the gene, or if you can alter the gene, it will be very very interesting, you know. So so this this kind of thing, uh, with CRISPR technology and a bit of uh, knowledge of how to culture cells. You can do it in the lab now. <laughs> okay. Orang lain tak ada soalan ke? <laughs> Orang lain dia dia tengah makan nasi. <laughs> Uh, another thing, and eh, the, the student, the PhD student, I, I, I always want to talk to you, but I have I, because I am no longer um, uh, dealing with uh, undergraduate and postgraduate uh, in PTSK. I spend most of time uh, with uh, uh, international collaborators. Uh, actually, I just want to let you know that uh, during your master's and PhD, ni, Try to forget about getting job. Jangan fikir masalah kerja. Just focus on your study and leave the job. You know, uh, possibilities or leave the things to to the God. You know why? Because if you start thinking about where I want to get a job, when I want to get a job after I finish, you know, everybody is talking about uh, no work, lah, and then you, or people will say that you are overqualified, everything. I tell you what, what you are thinking is just like what I was thinking when I was sitting in your shoes. 
But when I finish my PhD, tak ada. Biasa je, okay je. You know, tak ada apa. Kawin, ada anak enam. You know, it's, it's, it's not something that you... That's why when when Allah say, there are two things. You shouldn't think much. Yang pertama, jodoh. Yang kedua, rezeki. Yang ketiga, mati. Because these three things is already been written at Luh Mahfuz. When you are arguing about job, uh, job, job, you are actually arguing about your rezeki tau. And you are not, you are trying to thank God ke? Everybody come to me, the uproar, macam mana ni saya nak kerja apa nanti saya buat PhD. You are asking me about a job. With, it's just like you asking when you're going to die. See? Oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> payah. Saya nak jawab pun payah. The dean nak jawab pun payah. <laughs> Even the prime minister pun tak boleh nak jawab. So it's very hard to, to say that, okay, uh, by this date you finish PhD, okay, the next two weeks you will get a job. Tak ada. There's no way. I still remember when my upload said to me. That time, uh, I was proposing to go and, you know, uh, bertunang lah. Uh, I told my my my, my dad, uh, ayah, saya nak kahwin. Ayah cakap kat saya, mu nak kahwin, mu kerja apa, nak bagi makan anak orang. Uh, my upload, uh, dia bagi sebiji, senyap terus ayah saya. Dia bagi apa? Syarum tu, kalau dia tak ada rezeki, besok mati dia. So don't think about who is going to pick you. <laughs> you see? So, so never think about job. Just do your master, PhD, and be the best. The job will come to you if people need you. The reason why uh, students cannot get proper job or jobs as what they want is because they don't show. Um, Dia, uh, apa, tak ada apa ni, tak ada kebolehan yang dikehendaki. You know, when people interview, people know whether you can work for them or not. So that's why when you learn, you have to focus. When you do your PhD, try your best uh, to show to people, to learn. Don't ask. If supervisor said to you, buat benda ni sampai kaki kiri angkat, you buat. Tapi janganlah macam tu. Itu melampau lah pula kan. Uh, you run gel, kaki kiri kena angkat, you pun buat lah juga. Itu tolol lah pula kan. Tapi nak cakapnya, apa yang supervisor you suruh tu, that is not an instruction. That is actually uh, a way of God sending you to a better a better chance. Because you are learning a new thing. Cumanya, it was not written in your protocol. And then you are arguing with supervisor. Uh, doktor, kan saya kena buat yang benda ni, kan? Uh, tapi, doktor suruh buat benda ni pula. Saya dah buat benda ni. Ini saya dah buat dah. Ini tak buat lagi. Kan? Tapi, doktor suruh buat benda ni pula. Kan? So, jangan macam tu. Dengan supervisor, tak apa. Yes dulu. Balik, baru fikir. That's the way how I did my PhD, my master. Always yes first. Okay, no problem, prof. Tomorrow, done. Balik tu tak tidur malam lah. Ha. But, you know, from there, you, you you are learning now. You are learning extra things. That's why when I go into interview, people ask here, left and right, up and down, I can answer. Because I went through so many things, even in, not in my area pun, I can do. Because I help my people, my friends, dekat lab sebelah, you know, doing uh, interference RNA and so on and so forth. It's not my project pun. But when you go and talk, nobody knows what you are doing. So this this kind of, this, this kind of thing. Uh, bagi mereka yang dah ada scholarship, uh, okey lah, tak ada masalah lah, dapat kerja terus lah lepas ni kan. Tapi yang yang tak ada scholarship tu macam saya, nak struggle lah sikit. So janganlah uh, terlebih sangat, tak ada, tak ada fikir nak kerja kan. Uh, sekarang ni siapa-siapa yang nak habis PhD, because postdoc punya advertisement dah came out. Mana Fatin tadi? Fatin. Dia ada lagi tak? Kau tidur tak? Ha, dia nak habis dah kan? Ha, isi borang tu. 
isi borang, postdoc, and then uh, uh, discuss with the supervisor uh, and go see the dean or deputy dean. So come to me, but tak apa, kita boleh bincang. I can find you um, uh, people in USM with huge amount of grants so that you can go and become their postdoc. Okay. So you are very lucky because you are allowed to do postdoc. Uh, after your PhD. During my time, we don't have chance to do postdoc. Uh, you bought postdoc, you belajar, and then you learn about so many things. You learn how to write, and you learn how to uh, 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 apply grants, and so on and so forth. So, um, and not many uh, university offer postdoc. USM adalah salah satu university yang offer postdoc. Uh, UM pun ada, UKM pun ada. Uh, UK, uh, RU lah uh, yang ada postdoc. Postdoc gaji RM5,000. Uh, bunyi RM5,000 tu senyum lah. Uh. Kan? Saya kerja pensyarah ada PhD daripada Oxford pun gaji RM2,300 je tu. Uh, you keluar ni gaji RM5,000 kalau dapat postdoc tu. Uh, tapi you kena, kena uh, ni lah, kena jumpa dengan supervisor, kena bincang projek tu dan sebagainya. Uh, if, if you if you have a uh, connection, you will, you will manage to to get it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Dah 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 dah. Tak. Galik prof galik. Nak galik. Ah uh, galik kita 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 buat uh, masa masa ni masa apa masa masa malam malam ke saya saya kan tak boleh tidur malam. So kita keluar minum ke kita cerita lah. Prof tak boleh tidur malam? Ah saya ada masalah. Ah, kalau malam saya tak boleh tidur lah. Oh. Ah. You will know when you come to my age. Okay. Ah. Saya sangat baking masalah umat Prof. <laughs> Itulah dia. Ah. Terima kasih banyak Prof. Okay sama-sama insyaAllah kita jumpa lagi ya. Eh. Saya nak exit. Saya nak exit lah. Eh. Ya yeah, ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Terima kasih banyak Prof. Terima kasih Prof. Assalamualaikum. Ya. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Okay. Semua yang okay. Terima kasih semua Okay, semua orang boleh uh, meeting, boleh left meeting. Hafiz boleh end meeting for Okay, bye. Dah boleh stop kan? Ah, yang recording tu boleh stop dah. Alright. So, dalam masa 24 jam, uh, dia punya recording tu akan appealing lah. Tapi, ni dekat club ada kan? Ah, ada, ada. Alright, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye.